Uh, well, my worst offseason fears have become a reality, and Georgia offensive coordinator Todd Munkin has accepted the same position with the Baltimore Ravens um, in the NFL. Kind of thought this was coming. I tried to hold out hope that maybe the Ravens would get Eric Bieniemy from the Chiefs um, after the Super Bowl ended. <sighs> no such luck. Todd, uh, Todd Munkin, gone from Athens, gone from Georgia, uh, to become offensive coordinator at the Baltimore Ravens. So, uh, I'm kind of notoriously um, pessimistic anyway when it comes to Georgia. I think this is a huge blow. I think um, Todd Munkin was the single most important piece of Georgia offensively over the last couple of years. Um, yes, Georgia's got some talent offensively. There's no question about it. I mean, Brock Bowers, you've always got good running backs. Ladd McConkey has played well. The offensive line is great. All of that stuff is true. We definitely have talent. It's been a lot of years where Georgia's had talent, though, and the offense hasn't performed at the level it did under Todd Munkin or put up those types um, of numbers. And I know that when you're, you know, a top five, top 10 program, whatever the case, that you can expect this to happen. You're going to lose coordinators. I, uh, this isn't the first time. I mean, this, this Todd Munkin was uh, Kirby's third offensive coordinator. More on that in a second. Defensive coordinator, too. You know, we've lost multiple defensive coordinators. Um, going back to uh, Mel Tucker, we've lost Dan Lanning. And, you know, the, the thing is with Kirby, he's a defensive guy. So I'm always more comfortable having to replace a defensive coordinator under Kirby Smart than I am an offensive coordinator under Kirby Smart. Um, it, 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 and, and back to the three that he's had. So he had Cheney, Coley, and um, Munkin. Two of the three were duds. I, I didn't like Cheney. I didn't like Coley. I loved Munkin. I think Todd Munkin's the best offensive coordinator Georgia's ever had. So this is not a good thing. Um, I, I don't think anybody, Georgia fan or anyone else, is going to make the argument that it's good for Georgia that Todd Munkin is leaving. Now, this has been expected by me, really, from the day Todd Munkin was hired. I, I remember making a video when he was hired saying, you know, the guy's kind of a nomad. He never stays anywhere for more than two or three years. And if you go back and look over the course of his career, that's been true. I thought we were going to lose him after last season. When we won the first of the two national titles, I said, well, Munkin will probably leave. Um, he stayed. Uh, but then this year, he's been interviewing, of course, with Tampa Bay and Baltimore. And, you know, you kind of just been waiting to find out what the resolution is going to be. And today we find out he's gone to uh, Baltimore. And this is not good. Um, now, as far as what it means for Georgia going forward, it's going to depend on the success of the next offensive coordinator, right? And it looks like that's going to be Mike Bobo. I'm in a weird spot when it comes to Mike Bobo because a lot of Georgia fans over the last couple of weeks have been trashing Mike Bobo, and I've been the one that's actually been taken up for him, and it's usually the other way around. I'm usually the one who is loud or, or, or quick to... Um, criticize a coach or a player or something like that for Georgia if I think they deserve it. And a lot of the people who are being critical of Mike Bobo over the last couple of weeks are the people who, generally speaking, won't ever say anything bad about anybody Georgia-related, period, the, the so-called Disney dogs, right? I don't think Mike Bobo was a terrible offensive coordinator when he was at Georgia. And I'm not saying that today because Mike Bobo was hired. I've been saying this since 2012 when he was there. Um we didn't get where we wanted to go under Mike Bobo when he was offensive coordinator. But it's hard to place the blame for that on Mike Bobo. I mean, Mike Bobo was averaging 40 points a game as offensive coordinator at Georgia a decade ago. Long before Georgia was widely considered to be some top destination for um, high school talent or, or elite college coaches or whatever. I mean, that was back when Georgia was kind of trying to break through. I mean, they had won the SEC titles back in 02 and 05, but from 06 until 17, so an 11-year period, no SEC titles, Bobo was there for seven or eight years of that, basically from, what, 2006, I think, th uh, through around 2013 or 14. So, you know, he was there through the Aaron Murray years, when, and Georgia was putting up ridiculous numbers offensively. Defense tended to be more of an issue those years than offense did. None of that means that Mike Bobo is going to be a home run hire as offensive coordinator at Georgia, though. We we just aren't going to know, really, until we see Georgia's offense this year. Part of the problem is how late in the year this is happening, right? A lot of your coaching changes are happening sooner and sooner now in college football. We see this every year. You got coaches, head coaches getting fired, going all the way 
you know, back to the beginning of November now, some even sooner than that. I mean, we've had coaches fired in September, right, Scott Frost? But so coaches are being fired, you know, in September, October, November, and December. Coaches are being hired in December and, and sometimes January, but mostly by December, you've got your new head coach in place and he's gone out and he's sort of handpicked his staff. So by the time you get to mid-February, which is where we're at now, there's not a lot of guys that are out looking for jobs, right? It becomes hard to pick somebody. So I don't know if, if well, clearly this plan was in place for some amount of time. Kirby didn't find out today that Munkin was taking the Ravens job and then just come to the conclusion that he was going to promote Bobo. This has clearly been the plan for however long Munkin has been flirting with going with, uh, to the NFL a couple of months now. Kirby, I guess, has known, well, you know, if he leaves, we'll just promote Bobo. So I'm not ready to, uh, you know, I'm not ready to uh, throw the season away this upcoming year by any means. I think Georgia still a top five team entering the season next year probably going to remain the consensus number one um, in everyone's rankings entering the season next year. But this does leave a huge question mark for Georgia offensively. We're going to be starting now a brand new quarterback who's never started a game. Regardless of who it ends up being, I think it'll be Carson Beck. But you got Brock Vandergriff and Gunnar Stockton as well. Whoever it is of those three, though, has never started a college football game. And calling plays is going to be Mike Bobo. A guy that's been around college football forever, set all kinds of records at Georgia back in the 90s, was a coach at Georgia for a while, became offensive coordinator, had a stint as head coach at Colorado State that did not go well, which means absolutely nothing, by the way. I don't know how many times I have to talk about the Will Muschamps or the Dan Mullins or the Jeremy Pruitts of the world. Not every great coach is destined to be a great head coach. Some people are just great position coaches or great coordinators, such as the case with Will Muschamp, for example, Jeremy Pruitt. Uh, Mike Bobo didn't go well at Colorado State, plus he had some health issues there. He had to st step down slash resign slash get fired, basically. He ends up back at Georgia, uh, actually at South Carolina, I believe, for um, a little while. Uh, under was he, was he OC at South Carolina under Muschamp? Anyway, now he's been at Georgia the last couple of years as a, a offensive analyst, you know, basically a second offensive coordinator. Um, they're working alongside Todd Munkin. So, I definitely don't think this is the end of the world for Georgia. It's, I, I also will freely admit this is a huge question mark and a big blow to Georgia offensively because, you know, I coordinators matter. Um, that's the bottom line. Yeah, you got to have talent. Head coach clearly matters. Development matters. Coordinators and play calling matter. Um, you know, you can look at Alabama over the last couple of years as a prime example of that. The fans, whether right or wrong, you know, who, who knows? Maybe we'll find out this year. But, you know, Alabama fans blame their coordinators for – their shortcomings the last couple of years. I mean, um, you look at Clemson and how much their offense fell off um, under uh, Streeter, was it? Co coordinators clearly matter. I mean, we're just kidding ourselves to think that coordinators don't matter at all. Of course, coordinators matter. And Munkin was probably the best Georgia has ever had. And um, will Bobo be as good as Munkin as an offensive coordinator? Probably not. Um, probably not. Um, but he, he's going to have a lot of talent to work with. And, um, you know, I, uh, I'm cautiously, cautiously optimistic, I guess would be the best way to describe how I feel about Bobo being an offensive coordinator. I'm also torn on the one hand, because I feel like a, a program like Georgia should conduct a nationwide search for these major openings. But that gets back to the point I made a minute ago. It's so late in the season. I mean, we're a couple of weeks away from spring practice starting. You don't really have time to be out conducting a month-long nationwide search for your next coordinator now. You can make the argument maybe Georgia should have been doing that all along, considering how openly Todd Munkin was flirting with the NFL, and that's a fair point, too. So we'll see. Kirby, uh, so far, has hired three offensive coordinators. Two of them were complete duds. Just facts and reality. I love Kirby Smart. I think he's the best coach in college football today. He's not the GOAT. He's not the greatest of all time. That's Nick Saban, but... Right now, coach, you know, Kirby's the greatest, uh, the best coach in college football today. So I've got faith and trust in Kirby, but we have to be realistic. He's hired three offensive coordinators. Two of them were complete duds, Chaney and Coley. Munkin was a home run. Now he's got to replace that, and the pressure is on if you're Mike Bobo because Georgia's offense really has never looked better than what it's looked in the last couple of years. Now, I, again, I, I understand that a lot of that is due to talent. A lot of it. You got Brock Bowers, Darnell Washington, one of the best offensive lines 
you know, we've ever had almost every single year in the last few years. Um, so I get that, but play calling is a big part of it. So it's, it's, it's put up or shut up time uh, for Bobo. I've gone to bat for him. Again, not because he was just hired as Georgia's offensive coordinator. This has been an argument that's been ongoing with Georgia fans for a decade when it comes to Mike Bobo. Um, I, I've supported Mike Bobo when he was coordinator before. We were scoring 40 points a game. Other segments of the fan base did not like Mo, Mo Bobo when he was an offensive coordinator. They said he didn't like uh, – he ran the ball too much or he threw too many screen passes or whatever. I mean, I don't know. We were, we were scoring 40 points a game, so it was okay with me, but – um, anyway, Todd Munkin out. Bottom line, it's not good. It, you know, it's not like Todd Munkin was terrible, so Georgia fans are excited to lose him. Todd Munkin was amazing. It is not good to lose him. What does it mean for next year? We'll see. Bobo's the man. I have faith in him. He's a Georgia boy. Um, we'll see. Have a good morning.